Hello guys, Archangel here, and first of all I'd like to apologise for the lack of uploads recently. I've got exams coming up, and so this will continue for a few weeks, but the holidays are coming in just over a month's time now, so I'll having regular uploads then. But anyways, without further ado, welcome to my Blood Elf Death Knight tanking guide to patch 5.2. First they'll be talking about the stat priority for DKs, now you can vary certain parts of this but as of the start you want to be getting stamina but to some extent you want to be going eventually mastery over stamina but that's when you think that you have enough for the fight that you're doing to survive say the worst case scenario in a fight. Next you can take either the choice of taking hit and expertise to 7.50% which I believe is 2550 rating each and or you can take dodge and parry. Uh, they vary depending on your choice really, but I'd prefer to take hit and expertise so you can be landing rune strikes for more damage for your group because DPS and tanking is actually quite important so yeah it's better DPS if you're hitting the boss all the time and expertise is also good to get up but I prefer to get hit up first but they're both even really. After that I've put haste down because as a death knight sometimes you will be replacing uh, old tanking gear with good new DPS gear that no one else needs because of stamina and mastery if it's got stamina and mastery on and it's better than what you have in your tanking gear it's likely you want to replace that and haste is actually better than crit so there you go okay so as for your gems for your yellow gem you want to be going fractured sun's radiance which is flat out mastery for your blue gems you either want to go poison wild jade or solids river heart, rivers hearts poison wild jade is a mix of stamina and mastery and Solid River's Heart is just pure stamina, so it depends if you want to be getting any health up or not, or your mastery up. Red, you want to be going Fine Vermilion Onyx, that gives parry and mastery. And you met a gem, you want to be using Austere Primal Diamond. Austere Primal Diamond gives you stamina and armor, 2% I believe armor. And to be Prismatic Slot, you want to be either going the Fractured Sun's Radiance or the Solid Lidded River's Heart. On to talents now, for a Blood Death Knight these are going to be varying between boss fights but on to the first tier you definitely want to be taking raw in Blood because you can get a lot of Blood Balls off and that's Trigger and Pestilence, that's one less ability on your bars and Pestilence will technically do damage now because it's Blood Ball. On the second tier of talents you'll be taking either Anti-Magic Zone Purgatory but not necessarily Lichborn because it's not so big a heal in Lich as Lichborn is in say PvP for Unholy. Purgatory is very good on fights where you can be taking big amounts of damage suddenly, so if you actually die then your team can get you up again quickly. Anti-Magic Zone is good on fights with high magic damage. This is, I found, very good on the Hydra boss and Throne of Thunder because it can absorb all of the breath they put on you, so that's very good. On the third tier of talents, Chill Blains I've taken at the moment, and that Chill Blains, why would I take that, is for fights where, you can, where you're off tanking and kiting adds. You can also take Death's Advance for the mobility and asphyxiate on fights with certain adds that can be stunned and it's very good if they are stunned. On the fourth tier of talents I've taken Death Pack, the other two aren't really useful but they can be used. Death Pack's a nice big heal when you need it most when you're taking big amounts of damage it's a nice cooldown as well so I'd take Death Pack on that for sure. On the fifth tier I've taken Blood Tap. Blood Tap is the better of the three but they're not too far behind Runic Corruption and Runic Empowerment. Blood Tap is in fact the best by about, I think it's like I'm not sure how much DPS, but it's a very, very close margin. Now, Remorseless Winter is one of the times you can take, but you can also take Gorfin's Grasps for fights with little adds that can be gripped, so you can grip them all together, it's easy to get AoE and tank them down then. Remorseless Winter is also good when there's adds though, because they can be frozen, and that takes a lot of damage off your tanks. On on the turtle fight, in the front of Fauna, this is great against the bats because you almost have them stunned in the entire fight that they should be down by the end they're stunned, so it's absolutely fantastic against them because they're doing no damage. Desecrated Ground can be used on some fights when these two aren't useful, but there's not much places that you can use Desecrated Ground. As for talents, now there aren't many talents to be used by Blood Death Knights, but Anti-Magic Shell's certainly the best. It absorbs all incoming magical damage up to the absorption limit, making it 100%. Cliff Pestilence works with Blood Ball, because Blood Ball doesn't trigger the Pestilence itself. Well, it, it does trigger Pestilence, sorry, it's hard to explain this, but when you cast Blood Boil, it also casts Pestilence at the same time. It doesn't turn Pestilence into Blood Ball, so this ability does still work with Royal in Blood. Shifting Presences, if I'm off-tanking around the boss, I can go into a DPS spec to do a little bit more damage, and the minor Glyphs is completely up to you, but it's good sometimes to have the Glyph of the Army of the Dead, so your Army of the Dead no longer taunts the targets. As for your rotations, which I'll be giving examples of in a minute, firstly, for your single target rotation, you want to be Soul Reapering when your target is below 35% using your Blood Runes on that. Then you want to be having your diseases up. You can keep your diseases up by first putting them on of Outbreak, and thanks to our talents, well not our talents even, our base abilities, 
passives, we can get Blood Boil to refresh our diseases on the target, so make sure you don't let them drop off until outbreaks back on cooldown. And Death Strike after that, use your Unholy and Frost Runes and your Death Runes on that. Crimson Scourge will proc likely most of the time, but usually Death and Decay on Crimson Scourge whenever you can, then Blood Boil. Until the target is below 35%, you want to be using a Heart Strike on your Blood Runes, but not your Death Runes. You want to be saving them for Death Strikes and Rune Strike if it's going to cap. As for your multiple targets rotation, it's very simple. You just want to start by spreading diseases, get outbreak up on your main target, then blood boil if you've got rolling blood or pestilence otherwise to spread your diseases around. Then you want to be laying down death and decay, keep death and decay up as much as you can. Then you want to be spending the rest of your runes, blood and death on blood boil as long so long as there's enough targets for it to benefit them from that. Then you want to be using rune strike, death strike and heart strike if there's only like two targets, so otherwise blood boil won't be as effective. Now I'll be giving you an example of the single target rotation. You want to start by getting outbreak on your target, doing two heart strikes, and then getting your death strikes out. You see there it's procced, and then you get the death of decay down. Death of decay is more important than the blood boil there, remember. You want to be using Horn of Winter whenever you can and get your bone shield up as well. Keep bone shield up at all times when you're playing, when you're playing a blood death knight. It's a low cooldown, so you should have it as much as possible up. And there you go, Death Strike, I mean Death and Decay is off cooldown this time, so you want to be using Blood Ball there and it gets diseases up and spreads your diseases to the other targets as we can see. Keep Death Striking, Heart Strike on your Blood Runes, and then using Rune Strike. See, I capped Rune Strike there, that's a bad thing to do. Keep using Blood Tap if you take Blood Tap, really, how much is just as good as Blood Tap, actually, remember. So, and then Death and Decay is back on cooldown here, and that's pretty much it for the single target rotation there. When your target's below 35%, obviously, you want to be sending the Sorry for it, but you can't get the dummy below that, unfortunately. If worse comes to worse and your diseases drop off, then you want to be using Plague Strike to get them back on. Icy Touch isn't really usable, but it's good uh, if you want to be, if you have the Purge macro, but it's not very useful in PvE whatsoever. But in PvP, it can be useful as a Blood Death Knight. If you're AoE rotation, you want to stop by getting Outbreak on the target, doing Blood Boil to spread your diseases, get Death Decay down, and keep spending Blood Boil on those Death Runes, getting them out. If you've got any other free runes, such as Unholy and Frost, you want to be getting them together doing Death Strike, and that turns them into Death Runes, so you can get them up, up Blood Boil, sorry, not the main time then using your, and me and Blood Tap will be getting you the death runes you want to be using the Blood Boil on, so keep using that as well, keep using your rune strike to get the Blood Tap points. But that's it for the AoE rotation. Thank you for watching my Blood Elf tanking Death Knight, I hope this helped with your 5.2 progress, and good luck in front of the thunder, thank you for watching, I'll see you all soon.